Hi, welcome to Blitz News. I'm Alexander Neb, and this is our first episode. On Blitz News, we hope to bring you some relevant, pertinent news information, things you can talk about at your dinner table, things you can talk about at the bar with your friends. Yes, it's current events, but they do affect us in more interesting ways than you might not know. For example, today in the Middle East, Saudi Arabia and Egypt have just approved a $4 billion bridge project that will link across the Red Sea. For those of you who are not good with geography, Egypt is in the northeastern part of Africa, and Saudi Arabia is directly in the Arabian Peninsula. This bridge between them will go across the Red Sea. The Red Sea, if you know from the Bible, is the one that Moses allegedly parted in order for the, for the slaves to escape. This is going to be a great project for the entire region because it will increase mutual traffic between the two countries. It will increase, obviously, trade, and it will bring lots of wealth, which is obviously good for all parties involved. More importantly, why is this happening? Saudi Arabia, as you know, is in a proxy war with Iran all over the, 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 the Muslim Arab region for control. This will promote ties between Egypt and Saudi Arabia, which have been fraying in recent years, ever since 2011, when the long-term dictator uh, uh, Hosni Mubarak was ousted and then military rule was instituted. Now, there's currently a president in Egypt, a democratically elected president, al-Sisi, and this is seen as a, a closing of the bonds or the ties between the country of Egypt and Saudi Arabia, both of which are Sunni Muslim countries. Now, let's change our focus from the Middle East for a second. I want to take us to Spain. <clears throat> those of you who have been to Spain must know it's famous for its siestas. For those of you who don't know, siesta is obviously a nap. Uh, the, st the standard Spanish workday, unlike the Americans, which are 9 to 5, in Spain you go to work from 8 to 2 p.m., then you go home for two hours, you have a big meal, lunch is the biggest meal in Spain, not dinner, and you maybe you take a nap, that's why it's called the siesta, and then you go back to work for two to three hours. <clears throat> Traditionally, this was useful when people lived in farming communities in the outskirts of Spain and not in major cities. But now that most Spaniards live in major cities, people don't have enough time to go back home for this big meal. So what they end up doing is they spend those two hours sitting at a cafe, and then they go back home really late at night exhausted. So people, go, people might be away from their house from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. This makes uh, child care difficult and obviously it costs a lot of money. And, and, it's, and, and it's why Spain ranks the second lowest in product productivity of countries in Europe. So President Rajoy uh, has propose to their parliament that they get rid of the get rid of well get rid of the siesta altogether get rid of this two to four break and start to institute a more natural nine to five work day uh, op proponents obviously say this will save money and time but opponents say this is an empty gesture because it's only 25 percent of spaniards are actually still taking siestas anyway so spaniards the real lack of productivity in the spanish economy has more to do with the labor needs and shortages of the, of the market versus cultural factors such as the siesta. For example, consider this structural uh, weakness. Spain is directly south of the United Kingdom, yet if you're living in New York and it's 6 o'clock, it's, it's going to be 11 o'clock in London but midnight in Spain, even though they're on the same latitude line. Why is this? During World War II, uh, Franco uh, <clears throat> Franco, who was the dictator for 40 years in Spain, he decided to align himself with the Nazis. Even though he never formally became engaged in the war, he was tacitly allied with the Nazis. And to give a nod to them, he moved his timeline over one hour so he would be on the same timeline as Germany. And that has never changed, even though the, uh, General Franco has been dead for well over 40 years. So this is all already contributing to some of the problems when you're trying to trade with your neighbors and your banks are closing an hour before the people that are in your same time zone. So. This is one way, besides the CSA, that Spain could work on its productivity. Finally, I'm going to go back to, actually, I'm going to go back to the Middle East, to so Turkey. So, for those of you who don't know, the European Union and Turkey signed an agreement deal in the last, the last couple weeks, which said, which is going to shut down the entire uh, Balkan route for refugees, because as it stands right now, refugees go to Europe one of two ways. They either go through Africa all the way up to uh, the most northern point of Africa, and then they take ferries across illegally, or they cross over from Turkey, they, they, they cross over from Turkey onto boats into Greece, which you are familiar with, the people washed up on shore, very tragic. Or they go through the land bridge, right here through Bulgaria. And last year you were having 10,000 people a day show up in Europe. Now, you, it's gone, now it's down to uh, 200 a day through just this land bridge. That's because Turkey has officially closed the border. In exchange for the European Union providing Turkey with billions and billions of euros in funds for housing and taking care of these refugees, Turkey has agreed to actually police its own border and not let people cross it legally. We'll see if this pans out. 
Final story, I guess, human interest piece. In Austria, the house that Hitler was born in is, has come under fire because the woman who has, has leased it to the government since World War II has now said she refuses to lease it. Obviously, the Austrian government in Europe as large has a vested interest in not promoting neo-Nazism, and a lot of neo-fascist neo-Nazis go there currently because they're sympathetic to the site and they worship it because they worship their idol Adolf Hitler. So, as of now, it's in the courts whether or not the Austrian government has the right to legally seize the house by force and then demolish it or turn it to a museum, whatever they want to. Anyway, I'm Alexander Neb, and that's all I have for you today on Blitz News.